Hello everyone. We know the meaning of words in English with the relationships of other words in terms of synonymy, antonymy, hyponymy and prototype. In this lecture, we will discuss lexical relations. It is one of the most important topics in the subject semantics. Furthermore, this lecture is divided into two parts. Some of lexical relations will be discussed in this lecture while those which are left will be discussed in the next one. So let's begin our today's lecture and learn lexical relations. Lexical relations. In everyday talk, we often explain the meaning of words in terms of the relationships. If we are asked the meaning of the word conceal, for example, we might say it is the same as hide. So this technique is known as synonymy. When we know the meaning of one word with the relationship of other word that is closely related to, this technique is known as synonymy or give the meaning of shallow as opposite of deep. So this technique is known as antonymy because deep and shallow are the opposite of each other or the meaning of daffodil as a kind of flower. So the meaning of daffodil is included in the meaning of a kind of flower. So this technique is known as hyponymy. In doing so, we are characterizing the meaning of each word not in terms of its component feature because there are also some other ways to know the meaning of words like component feature, whether that is male or female, masculine or feminine, right? Or uh, like living or non-living things. So we are not discussing here the meaning of word through component feature, but in terms of its relationship to other words. This approach is used in semantic description of language and treated as the analysis of lexical relations. So the lexical relation we have just exemplified or synonymy here like uh, conceal and hide and antonymy like shallow and deep and uh, hyponymy like daffodil and flower, right? Now, the first lexical relation we discuss here, that is synonymy. First, we will define what is synonymy. Two or more words with very closely related meaning are called synonyms. So, see the definition that closely related, not exactly the same. So, when two or more words are very closely related, we call such words as synonym. So they can often though not always be substituted for each other in sentence. Sometimes we can replace one word with another if they are closely related, but not all the time, right? In the appropriate circumstances, we can say what was his answer or what was his reply. So we can say instead of what was his answer, what was his reply but in the appropriate circumstances, not all the time. With much the same meaning, other common example of synonym are the pairs, for example, almost and nearly, big and large, brute and wide, buy and purchase, cab and taxi, car and automobile, coach and sofa, and freedom and liberty. So, in some circumstances, you can use them as a synonym, but not in all, because in one circumstances, they may be correct, but in other circumstances, they may not be correct. For example, uh, if you are dealing with examination, so you can say that what was his answer, but you can't say that what was his reply. And like uh, um, on tel telephonic conversation, you can say that what was his answer or what was his reply. So it needs a particular circumstance that you can use synonym, but not all the time. Now, absolute synonymy. Very hardly we can find absolute synonymy. So what is absolute synonymy? When two or more words have exactly the same meaning. 
So it's very hard to find absolute synonymy. We should keep in mind that the idea of sameness of meaning used in discussing synonymy is not necessarily totally sameness. When we, see, when we say that synonym, so we mean that two words have the same meaning, but we can't have absolute synonymy. Two words or two phrases can never have the same meaning. There might be dialectical differences, there might be situational differences. One might be used in formal situation, one might be used in informal situation. One might be used in academic language, one might be used in non-academic. One might be used in technical writing or technical speaking. One, one might be used in uh, uh, like medical conversation. It depends on situation. So there are many occasions when one word is appropriate in a sentence but its synonym would be odd. For example, where is the word answer fits in the sentence that Cindy had only one answer correct on the test. The word reply would sound odd. So we can't say that Cindy had one reply. Okay, when we talk about examination. As I told you that during a, a telephone conversation, you can say that what was his answer or what was his reply. You can use synonym, but not on uh, all circumstances. So synonym forms may also differ in terms of formal versus informal. Sometimes a word may be formal and it needs like a particular circumstances when there is formal conversation. While sometimes you need to use the same word in informal situation, the synonym of its informal situation. Like the sentence, my father purchased a large automobile has virtually the same meaning as my dad bought a big car. But a big car, right, and a large car, both are synonym, both these words are synonym. But one is uh, like uh, uh, formal and one is informal, right? Like purchase, it is formal one and bought, it is informal one. So with four synonym replacement, but the second version sounds much more casual or informal than the first one. So my date bought a big car, it is informal and my father purchase a large car this is form you can see that my father and my dad have the same meaning but one will use in a formal situation my father formal date informal and purchase formal and bought informal large formal and a big informal similarly that automobile where it is automobile that is formal and car it is informal so these both sentences have same meaning but one is used in a formal situation while another one is used in informal situation right now we also know the meaning of word through uh, antonymy or antonym one word that is the opposite of another one it is also same with synonym as we can't have exactly two or more words the same meaning similarly that we can't have two words or more words with the, which are quite or uh, absolutely opposite of each other right so we can say that closely opposite but not exactly two forms with opposite meaning are called antonym some common examples are the pairs like alive and dead big and small fast and slow happy and sad hot and cold, long and short, male and female, married and single, old and new, rich and poor, true and false. So in this pair we see that one word is the opposite of another one. But we can't have absolute antonymy also. Two words cannot be exactly the opposite of each other. It also needs certain circumstances. Types of antonym. Antonyms are usually divided into two main types. One is called gradable opposites along a scale and non-gradable direct opposite. So first we discuss gradable antonym such as the pair big and small can be used in comparative construction like I am bigger than you and 
a poor is sorry a pony is smaller than a horse also the negative of one number of gradable pair does not necessarily imply the other for example the sentence my car isn't old doesn't necessarily mean my car is new so i hope you got that what is gradable antonym right that is along a scale now come towards non gradable antonyms with non gradable antonym also call complementary pairs comparative constructions are not normally used so in gradable we use comparative construction right bigger smaller right or uh, like shorter short and shorter but here we don't usually use comparative construction we don't typically describe someone as deader or more dead than another one also the negative of one member of non gradable pair does apply the other member that is my grandparents are in alive does indeed mean my grandparents are dead as we learn here that uh, my car is an old doesn't necessarily mean my car is new it does not apply but here it does apply like if i say that my grandparents are in alive it means that uh, my grandparents are dead right it implies so other non gradable antonyms in ideal list are the pairs like male and female married and single and true and false so these are not gradable uh, antonym we don't use them in comparative constructions right or when we use one is one is true the other is lie uh, a lie for example if i say that i am male so it implies that i am not a female or if i say that i am married so it it, it doesn't imply that i am not single right so this is called non gradable antonym so male is the opposite of female but we can't use in uh, like comparative construction we can't use married and single in comparative construction we can't use true and false in comparative construct we can't say like truer we can't say falser or we we can't say that he is uh, uh, false than me or than us i can't say that female i can't say like male right so these are known as non gradable antonyms right although we can use the negative test to identify non gradable antonyms in language we usually avoid describing one member of an uh, antonymous pair as the negative of other for example while undress can be treated as the opposite of dress of course it doesn't mean not dress right and usually that it actually mean uh, do the reverse of the dress right the reverse of something antonym of this type are called a uh, reversive so these antonyms are known as reversive because you are going the reverse of our dress and undress so other common examples are enter and exit so exit that is the reverse of something pack and unpack and lengthen and shorten raise and lower and tie and untie so here we uh, applied what we applied a negative test to identify a non gradable antonyms another lexical relation is known as hyponymy so what is hyponymy when the meaning of one form is included in the meaning of another the relationship is described as hyponymy examples are the pair animal and dog so the meaning of animal is included in the meaning of dog similarly dog poodle vegetable carrot flower rose tree banyan the concept of inclusion involved in this relationship is the idea that if an object is a rose then it is necessary a flower so if this is Uh, a dog it is necessary that it is an animal so the meaning of animal is included in the meaning of dog similarly that the meaning of poodle is included in the meaning of dog and the meaning of carrot is included in the meaning of vegetable so we know the meaning of one word with the help of another one this technique is known as hyponymy so we were here then it is necessary that 
we are here that the idea if an object is a rose then it is necessary a flower so the meaning of flower is included in the meaning of rose or rose is hyponym of flower right so dog is the hyponym of animal poodle is the hyponym of dog and carrot is the hyponym of vegetable and rose is the hyponym of flower right or banyan is the hyponym of tree right so we know the meaning of words uh, with this process and this is known as hyponymy when we consider hyponymous connection we are essentially looking at the meaning of words in the same type of hierarchical relationship we can represent the relationship between a set of words such as animal, arm, as, banyan, carrot, and cockroach, creature, dog, flower, horse, insect, living thing, pine, plant, poodle, rose, snake, tree, and vegetable as hierarchical diagram. Right? Because their meaning is included in the meaning of other. Now look at this hierarchical diagram of meaning. On the top we have living thing and here we have creature and here we have plant. And under the creature we have animal and we have insect. And under the plant we have vegetable, flower and tree. Similarly that under the tree we have banyan and we have pine and under the flower we have rose and under the vegetable we have carrot. Under the insect we have ant and cockroach and under the animal we have dog, horse and snake and under the dog we have poodle, under the snake we have ass. So some of the words here would be refer as hyponym while some of the words would be refer as superordinate. So superordinate would be the general words. For example, we have here word animal. So animal is a superordinate word. Okay. And then in animal, we have dog, we have horse and we have snake. So snake would be the hyponym of animal. And horse would be the hyponym of animal. And dog would be the hyponym of animal. Right. And animal would be considered as the superordinate because it has a general meaning. Similarly, that insect has a general meaning. Ant, ant and cockroach would be the hyponym. So ant is the hyponym of insect and cockroach is also the hyponym of insect. Similarly, that carrot is the hyponym of vegetable. So vegetable would be the superordinate because it has general meaning and it has a specific meaning. Flower would be the superordinate of rose and rose would be the hyponym. And tree would be the superordinate and banyan and pine would be the hyponym. Sometimes we have also co-hyponym. For example, the dog and horse are the co-hyponym of the superordinate animal, right? Now on this slide we will discuss superordinate and co-hyponym. Look at, look at the diagram we can say that horse is a hyponym of animal. Right? We see here that horse is a hyponym of animal and animal would be superordinate. Right? Or cockroach is a hyponym of insect. In these two examples animal and insect are called the superordinate. So animal and insect are superordinate, ant and cockroach are hyponym and dog, animal and snake are also hyponym, right? Higher level terms, we can also say that the two or more words that share the same superordinate term as co-hyponym. So dog and horse are the co-hyponym and the superordinate term is animal. So dog and horse are the co-hyponym of animal, right? Now, the relation of hyponymy captured the concept of is kind of. So when we say, like for example, rose, so we say it's a kind of. Kind of what? Kind of flower. 
right or when we say carrot it's a kind of kind of food kind of vegetable as when we give the meaning of word by saying is as is a kind of snake sometimes the only thing we know about the meaning of a word is that it is a hyponym of another term and we don't know exactly so we say it's a kind of so that is we may know nothing more about the meaning of the word as other than that it is a kind of snake or the kind that banyan is a kind of tree we don't know anything about as or about banyan it's a word emphasizing that it is not only words for things that are hyponym words such as punch shoot and stab describing action can can all be treated as co-hyponym of the superordinate term anger so it means that we don't have only nouns which are hyponym and superordinate but we can also have verbs like as we mentioned here that punch shoot and stab describing action can all treat it as the co-hyponym of the superordinate term anger now here we will discuss prototype while the words canary or Carmorant, dove, duck, flamingo, parrot, pelican, and robin are all equal co hyponym of the superordinate bird because all of them are included in bird. They are not all considered to be equally good example of the category bird. According to some researchers, the most characteristic instance of the category bird is robin. So you will have to find the most typical example, right? What is typical in that category? If you want to know that what is prototype, so I have already uploaded a video on prototype, please go to the playlist under semantics and you can find this video over there. So the idea of the characteristic instance of a category is known as the prototype. The concept of prototype helps explain the meaning of certain words like bird, not in terms of the complement feature like has feather, has wing, but in terms of resemblance to the, to the clearest example. Thus, even native speaker of English might wonder if Ostrich or penguin should be hyponyms of bird, technically they are, but have no trouble deciding about sparrow or pigeons. So these uh, uh, last two are much uh, closer <coughs> to the prototype. So when we discuss prototype, so we have to see that what is the most typical in that category for example when we say furniture so in furniture what is the most typical that is chair right when we say man so what is the most typical in man that his height should be like 5.8 medium height and the, the color of hair or the color of skin blah 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 so we have to focus that what is the most typical in that category so that would be the prototype Given the category label like furniture, we are, we are quick to recognize chairs as the better example than bench or stool. Given clothing, people recognize shirts quicker than shoes. And given vegetable, they accept carrot before potato or tomato. It is clear that there is some general pattern to the uh, categorization process involved in prototypes and that has determined our uh, interpretation of our meaning. However, this is one area where individual experience can lead to substantial variation interpretations and people may disagree over the categorization of word like uh, uh, avocado or tomato as fruit or vegetable. So sometimes it changes context to context also. So these words seem to be treated as co hyponym of both fruit and vegetable in different uh, contexts. It depends on the context, right? So thank you so much. We will discuss in the next lecture, uh, homophone and homonym, and we will discuss polysemy, and we will also discuss metonymy, Okay, and we will discuss also 
collocation. So keep watching and enjoy learning with Muhammad Imran. Please don't forget to subscribe and like the channel and provide your valuable uh, feedback.